In this video, we're going to look at the alternation of generations life cycle. This generic life cycle can be seen in simple protists like green algae, but it's also the basis of our, all of our fungal life cycles and all of our plant life cycles. So it's very important that we learn it now. It will make learning the fungus life cycles and the plant life cycles much easier. Before we get going drawing the cycle, there's many terms that we need to review. Now it's a long list, but we'll go through each of them one at a time and it'll make this process much easier. So let's get started. Our first term is haploid, the condition where a cell has only one copy of every chromosome. So if we draw our cell and we see our nucleus and we look inside, if we have one long chromosome and one short chromosome and let's say one bent chromosome, we call this condition haploid. There's one of each type and we can give it the designation N. We let N represent haploid, one of every number. So haploid is a term we're going to use a lot. We'll say that a cell is haploid, having one of every chromosome. We'll contrast that with the term diploid, think die. You can already imagine it's going to have two of every chromosome. So we have two long chromosomes and uh, two short chromosomes and two of these bent chromosomes. And if haploid was one N, then diploid would represent with two N. And if we think about it, we can understand where these two of every chromosome came from. Um, one came from each parent. In sexually reproducing organisms, each parent gives half of its genetic material. So we have two of chromosomes number one, two of number two, and two of number three. And so all of our chromosomes are in pairs, and we call that situation diploid. Now you'll hear me refer to ploidy. I'll say, what's the ploidy of this cell? It's really just referencing this haploid or diploid. I'm going to know, you know how many of each chromosome there is in there. You could uh, technically have a cell that's triploid, but for our sort of purposes, it's going to either be haploid or diploid. So what's the ploidy? All right. So our next term is mitosis. And it's really not more of a term. It's more of a process. And mitosis is a type of nuclear division. Some people say cell division, but it's technically a nuclear division that results in exact copies of the DNA being distributed to two new nuclei. It's usually followed by cell division, and it maintains the ploidy. Well, in this case, a picture is more important to, to see how this works. So here's our cell, and uh, during one stage, it replicates its DNA. And then I'm not going to show all the stages of mitosis, but we're going to see the end results. It goes through a series of divisions um, where we distribute these chromosomes into two daughter cells. But the key to this is a diploid cell gives rise to two diploid cells. So we get back what we start with. It maintains the ploidy. So mitosis is a type of cell division or nuclear division and followed by cell division that gives us back what we started with. Meaning if we had started with a haploid cell, this process would give us back haploid cells. So mitosis is a type of division that we're going to see in our cell cycle and our alternation of life, uh, alternation of generations life cycle. Now the other type of division is meiosis. In meiosis we have a type of division that reduces our chromosome number it cuts our ploidy in half. It actually involves two rounds of division. So we see here, here's a diploid cell. It has two long chromosomes, two short chromosomes. And after we go through this process of meiosis, we have four haploid cells. So we have a reduction division. So meiosis is going to be very useful in sexually reproducing organisms that are diploid to produce uh, haploid cells. So in our cycle, we're going to have both mitosis and meiosis and we need to remember which one does what. Mitosis gives us back what we started with, diploid to diploid or haploid to haploid, and meiosis takes us from diploid to haploid. Now for more details on the process of meiosis and mitosis, I've put some links up here and I'll take you to uh, videos on those two topics. It's only a few more terms before we can get started. In sexually reproducing organisms, we have a fusion of gametes at fertilization to produce a zygote. So our gametes are our sperm and egg. These gametes are haploid reproductive cells, again, that are used in sexual reproduction. And when they fuse, we have an event called fertilization. It's the fusion of these gametes to form a diploid resulting cell that we call a zygote. So we have three more terms here. Gametes, the haploid sexual reproductive cells, the fertilization, the event where they fuse, and zygote, the first cell that the result of that fertilization. So we have to see that the gametes are haploid 
and their fusion results in a diploid zygote. And spores. Spores are haploid reproductive cells used in asexual reproduction, whereas gametes were haploid reproductive cells used in sexual reproduction, spores are used in asexual reproduction, and we have to remember that spores are always haploid. Two more terms when we can get started, and these are the two kind of hard ones at first. We have gametophyte. The gametophyte is the haploid generation that gives rise to gametes. Well, alternating between gametophyte and our alternation of generation will be sporophyte. And so if gametophyte is the haploid generation, then sporophyte will be the, yes, that's right, the diploid generation. And if gametophytes give rise to gametes, then sporophytes must give rise to, yes, you guessed it, spores. So let's under highlight this. Gametophytes are haploid, and they make gametes. Sporophytes are diploid, and they're going to make spores. All right, so those are all the terms that we need, and now we can get started. We are talking about alternation of generation, and these are our two generations. We have a haploid gametophyte generation and a diploid sporophyte generation. Now this is where the video is going to become very interactive, I hope, because I want you to do this along with me. So we're going to alternate between sporophyte and gametophyte. And what I need you to do right now is to get out a piece of paper. Really, pause the video right now, get a blank piece of paper, get a pen or a pencil, and uh, I'll wait for you because we need to do this together. So pause the video. All right, so let's go. We can start on either side, sporophyte side or the gametophyte side. I'm going to start over here. We could have done it over here, but sporophytes make, you need to draw something here. Pause the video and write in what you think goes right here. Sporophytes make spores. Good. And then spores then will grow to be gametophytes. All right, you with me? Now gametophytes make, i give you a big hint here, gametophytes make, pause the video and write in what you think goes here. That's right, gametes, sperm and egg. You could write the word gametes there, it'd be just as good. Now sperm and egg are involved in what process? Whoops, I gave you that one, fertilization. So you need to pause the video and write down what goes right here. Go back and look at the terms. The sperm and egg fused during fertilization to make that's right, the zygote. And then the zygote grows to be the sporophyte. So it looks as if we're done, we have the whole cycle, but there's a lot of other information. Everywhere up here, we need to put a haploid or diploid. And we also have to put, during these lines, whether it's mitosis or meiosis, that's uh, the process involved. <clears throat> so let's start with the easy ones. We said that spores are always which? Haploid or diploid? Pause the video and underneath spores write either an N or a 2N. Did you get it? Spores are haploid. Uh, I think the other easiest one is over here, the sperm and egg, the gametes. The gametes are, pause the video and write down an N or a 2N next to the gametes. Good, yes, sperm and egg are haploid. And since sperm and egg fuse during fertilization, the zygote is, write down underneath the zygote an N or a 2N. There you go, 2N. All right, we're getting closer. Now this, uh, let's go over here, gametophytes making gametes. So the spores haploid and the sperm and egg are haploid, so it's pretty easy to see that the gametophyte will be haploid. There's no way for it to have become diploid. There's no other N for it to join with. So the process to get from the spores to the gametophyte, right here I want you to write either the word mitosis or meiosis. Pause the video and write right here, mitosis or meiosis. Did you get it? Mitosis gives us back what we started with, so a haploid spore makes a haploid gametophyte. Let's do the same thing right here. Mitosis or meiosis from gametophyte to gametes. There you go, mitosis, haploid to haploid. It's fertilization that takes these two haploids to diploid, and let's see, we have two other spots right here. Let me make a circle here. So right here I want you to write mitosis or meiosis and right here mitosis or meiosis pause the video and write those in well hopefully you remembered that the sporophyte generation is diploid so the zygotes diploid so we have mitosis here and the diploid sporophyte 
makes haploid spores through meiosis. So there you have it. Now what I would suggest is to um, kind of start this over. I give you the terms here, take another blank piece of paper, and write this out one more time. Maybe this time start with give me to fight here and build from there. Alright, so there you have your alternation generation life cycle. Hopefully you came up with something like this in your second round. We're starting with the gametophyte. I don't want to go through the whole thing again, but um, there's your alternation generation life cycle. You certainly need to know this uh, because it is the basis for the fungus life cycles we're going to do and all of the plant life cycles we're going to do. If you have any questions, uh, leave me a comment down below the video and um, I hope you learned something.